On January 11, 2024, in the Yellow Sea, China launched a new type of rocket called the Gravity One from a naval platform. This rocket uses a unique solid fuel technology. This distinctive rocket, equipped with four solid fuel boosters, unleashed a formidable thrust of 600 tons, successfully deploying three Earth observation satellites into a sun-synchronous orbit. The Gravity One marks a significant milestone as the most potent solid fuel rocket developed by China thus far, boasting a payload capacity of 6.5 tons to low Earth orbit. More notably, this launch exemplifies a burgeoning trend in China's aerospace industry, emphasizing the extensive use of sea-based launch platforms, China's sea launch revolution. It all began in early June 2019, just off the coast of Shandong province. A barge underwent modifications to accommodate the Long March 11th, a compact solid-fueled rocket developed by China's state-owned conglomerate, CASC. Originally intended for land launches, the Long March 11th was ingeniously adapted to be ejected from a launch tube on the barge using cold gas. On June 5, 2019, this capability was successfully demonstrated, with the Long March 11th igniting mid-air and deploying seven small satellites into low Earth orbit. This wasn't merely a one-time test of technology, it became a recurring success story. Repeated in 2020, 2022, and 2023, this feat saw the emergence of other players in the field. The Geelong 3 from China rocket in December 2022, Series 1 from Galactic Energy in September 2023, and now the Gravity 1 from Orion Space. With these new entrants, China's sea launch capabilities now span a wide range of payload capacities, from several hundred kilograms to 6.5 tons. Furthermore, this capacity is poised for expansion with the ongoing development of more powerful solid-fueled engines by China's state-owned solid fuel engine manufacturer Academy of Aerospace Solid Propulsion Technology. But China isn't stopping at solid-fueled rockets. Several Chinese commercial companies, such as Space Pioneer and Galactic Energy, are hinting at adapting their liquid-fueled rockets for sea launch as well. So why this sudden surge of interest in sea launches? And why does it seem predominantly Chinese? For context, sea launches are not entirely novel. Another company, Sea Launch, attempted this in the 2000s. This initiative was a collaborative effort involving individuals from Russia, Ukraine, America, and Norway. The concept revolved around creating a mobile sea platform capable of navigating from Long Beach to the equator. The primary aim was to leverage the Earth's rotation for the efficient launch of satellites into geostationary orbit. However, despite initial aspirations, the endeavor faced insurmountable challenges. The complexities and costs associated with sea-based launches rendered the venture economically unviable. Similarly, in China, the focus of sea-based satellite launches does not align with the strategies pursued by most Chinese aerospace companies. Notably, none of the sea-launch-capable rockets possess the necessary payload capacity for modern geostationary satellites, nor has this capability been actively promoted. Furthermore, China already boasts launch centers like Wenchang and Sichang, strategically located at low latitudes adequately catering to the needs of geostationary satellite launches. Nevertheless, the concept of sea-based launches presents inherent advantages, particularly for satellites destined for low Earth orbit or medium Earth orbit. By selecting launch locations tailored to specific orbital parameters, such as high latitude for polar orbits or low latitude for low inclination orbits, flexibility in deployment is achieved. This flexibility serves as a compelling factor for Chinese launch companies venturing into sea-based launches. Moreover, China's pursuit of sea launch capabilities can be attributed to a unique set of circumstances specific to the nation. Exploring this further requires examining geographical considerations on a map, unveiling China's oceanic launch revolution. China's three primary launch sites, namely Juquan, Taiwan, and Sichang, 
are all located inland. This positioning ensures that when rockets are launched, their initial stages and boosters typically descend on land, minimizing the risk of debris falling on densely populated areas. However, due to this limitation, these launch sites have strict azimuth restrictions and temporary evacuation zones are often designated for each launch to prevent any casualties in rural regions. Launching from the sea eliminates these constraints and complications. Companies can conduct launches into any orbital plane without the hassle of dealing with restricted zones or potential safety issues caused by falling debris. Moreover, China's existing launch sites are experiencing heavy traffic, with the number of launches increasing annually. This surge in activity, coupled with the prioritization of national space missions, has made it challenging for newly established commercial companies to secure launch slots at traditional military-controlled sites. In response to these challenges, China established a sea-based spaceport in the coastal city of Haiyang in 2019, exclusively for commercial launches. All Chinese commercial launch missions have since been conducted from this location. The local government in Shandong has been providing substantial funding and support to develop the spaceport, encouraging launch companies to establish manufacturing and assembly facilities locally. This support also extended to the construction of a dedicated mobile sea launch platform, initiated in 2021 and utilized for the first time during the Gravity One mission in 2024. Just to give you an idea, we're discussing a massive 162-meter-long vessel, which theoretically can support both solid and liquid fuel launch vehicles in the future. So, what can we anticipate from China and its sea launch endeavors in the upcoming years? Clearly, the goal of China's Haiyang spaceport, along with several Chinese launch companies and local governments, is to advance sea launch capabilities beyond the current one to three annual launches. Based on disclosed figures from various Chinese sea launch-capable rocket companies, there's speculation that China might achieve double-digit annual sea launches within the next two years. However, the long-term sustainability of this initiative is debatable. I believe the high costs encountered by the Russian-American company Sea Launch are likely applicable to the Chinese efforts as well. Additionally, there's a possibility that some of the current enthusiasm for Sea Launch in China is fueled by investor money. Given the remarkably low prices at which some launchers are being sold, some even comparable to the reusable SpaceX Falcon 9. Nonetheless, with substantial government support for Sea Launch infrastructure and the establishment of new launch sites in China, it appears that Chinese Sea Launch operations are here to stay, albeit possibly with fewer participants than at present. That's all for this video.